Hey guys, so today we're gonna to talk about another contemporary technique, and that is one of my personal favorites, slap tone. You might have heard it referred to as tongue pizzicato. For me, they're interchangeable. For other musicians, slap tongue is for single reed instruments, and tongue pizzicato is for flute, but I'm gonna use them interchangeably. What does it sound like? So it's kind of a single dynamic percussive hit. There are two ways to produce the sound. Um, one of them is physically easier, but I think less effective in sound. And one of them is a little bit harder to master, but gives you a more distinct sound. So we're gonna talk about both of them because sometimes you need the lesser of the two because of facility and it's good to have a range of sounds that you can create. So the first option is with your tongue basically leaving your mouth and then returning to your mouth. So I'm over exaggerating and sticking my tongue out farther than you actually would, but basically you stick your tongue out, create a seal around your tongue with your lips, and then pull it back. There's a burst of air that comes out with that motion and that's what creates the percussive sound. It's a little less effective because the air isn't moving as fast and it's not as controlled as the second way, which I'm going to tell you, but it is an easier way because it doesn't require the tongue motion. I, this is going to be an interestingly dirty video. I actually suggest that you first try this with the flute because you can hear the actual result. And then once you kind of get an idea of how to do it, take the flute away, get better at it, and then go back to the flute. If you saw the flutter video, I suggested you start without the flute at all. But with this, having that aural reassurance that you're doing something right is helpful. So. Just keep doing that and you'll get that kind of percussive sound. They're all variants on a slap tongue, then that's why I don't like this particular way of creating the sound as much because it's not as consistent. So what is this other way you're talking about, Robin? <laughs> this one's a little bit harder to explain because you can't necessarily see into my mouth, but basically what I'm doing is rolling my tongue up onto the roof of my mouth and then forcing it forward against my teeth. It's again, really, really hard to see because literally inside of my mouth, but it creates a consistent burst of air, unlike the previous technique. So, I can recreate the same sound over and over again. Again, to practice this, you wanna try it with a flute first. It's going to sound bad. That's just how it happens. And as I said, this one literally took me a year to get down. So it's gonna sound kind of fluffy. Your tongue has to be quite firm and quite controlled or else it's just not gonna create the burst of air that you need. So, or you're gonna make a, a mouth sound that doesn't create air, it just makes mouth sounds, which are also cool, but not really the point with this. So once you get the idea of how to create the sound on the flute, or at least get it so that you can get one of them to work like one out of every 20 times, then take the flute away and then just start making that action without the flute. Those of you who know me know that I make that sound all the time. And sometimes I don't even realize I'm doing it because that's how I learned to master slap tongue. I spent a lot of time just clicking, basically. Um, the moral of these videos is that I make the weirdest sounds out of context, and uh, yeah, it's all for the good of the flute. But it helped me control my tongue and build up the muscles. It's like, it's like weight training, but for flute. <laughs> um, so once I was more comfortable with that sound and could cr make the sound happen every time, I went back to the flute and started messing around with it and figuring out exactly how my embouchure had to be and everything like that. 
Again, this is like the flutter video where it's all up to you and your mouth shape and your tongue and your flute, how exactly you're going to do that. But the idea of getting it kind of down on the flute so you can hear it, you can see what works and what doesn't, then going away from the flute, mastering that sound and then bringing it back is really, really important because you're going to get frustrated if you can't do it consistently with the flute. I understand that. It was incredibly frustrating for me when I first started learning how to do these things as I wanted to do it immediately. But unfortunately, we're training our bodies to do something that we haven't had to do yet. Think about how long it took you to get a good sound on flute. It's not like it happened overnight. This is the same thing. It's just with a very particular sound. You ha unfortunately have to spend time with it and have to spend effort to get better at it. But that's what practicing is for. So slap tongue is a very, very difficult thing to learn properly. I hear a lot of performers kind of do it halfway. And while I understand how difficult it is to do it properly, it is quite possible. And I've heard a lot of people do it really, really well. So I hope that my ideas and some of my like little practice tips can help you guys learn it faster and master it faster because it's a really cool sound and it's one of these sounds that composers are using a lot more nowadays and so it's becoming the next standard sound. It's not as unusual anymore. If you have a sound that you want me to cover in these videos, please let me know. If you like this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to support me more, please check out my Patreon and I will see you guys on Saturday.